Hello guys and welcome back to another video tutorial series on system design. So let's start with today's topic of system designing and today we will be discussing another two key concepts of system designing and that is caching and consistent hashing. So in our last video tutorial series on system design, we have covered the concept of load balancing where we have discussed that what is a load balancing, why we need a load balancer in our distributed system and number three, where we need to incorporate a load balancer within our system. So if you have not gone through that video, I would highly recommend you to go through that video first and then come back to this video so that it will be easy for you to understand the complete flow of system design. So in our previous video tutorial series on load balancing, we were discussing that how a load balancer actually works, where we have discussed some of the important algorithms by which a load balancer distributes the traffic across various servers. And one of the methods by which a load balancer distributes traffic among various servers is by consistent hashing. But before that, we will be discussing the caching mechanism in our distributed system. Because consistent hashing is a general algorithm which is not only used by a load balancer but also it is used within the caching mechanism. So just like a load balancer helps to distribute the traffic among various servers, a caching mechanism will help the application in enhancing the response time for fetching the data from the memory. So before discussing the theories of what is a cache, why a cache is used in our system and where we should use a cache in our distributed system which you will be learning in this video tutorial series, let's first understand the mechanism of caching using a real-time application and for that we will be using our very own Amazon website. So over here, if you have noticed carefully, whenever we open a website for the first time, the loading time of the website is considerably high. Whereas the loading time of the same website, if we are entering for the second time, is quite low. So let's see this with an example. So over here, you can see I have opened here the website Amazon for the first time, where I want to see the top product about dishwashers. So let's click on dishwasher to navigate to the page. So over here with my slow internet which I have made intentionally for this demonstration so you can see that the loading time of this website is quite high whereas if I move back to the initial page and want to come back to the same section again at that time the loading time is quite fast and this is the main behavior of caching which we will be discussing now. So over here you have seen that with the help of a caching mechanism the loading time of the website have decreased significantly and it is very important to deliver the best experience to the user to improve the engagement and retention of the customer and in today's world business gets impacted due to the poor user experience so while designing our system we have to consider all this fact that whatever the website or the application that we are creating should be faster enough to provide a great experience for the user and because of this reason, we have to use the caching mechanism very intelligently so that we can provide a flawless experience for the user even when the user is having slow internet. And the caching policy which you have seen just now is called browser caching. So there are different type of caching mechanism that can be implemented within our distributed system which we will be discussing throughout our video. So hopefully you guys have understand that what is the real need of a caching mechanism. So now let's discuss that what is a cache. So over here also we will be using a real world analogy for understanding the definition of a cache. So let's take an example that you have decided to cook the dinner for tonight. And you have decided that for tonight you will be preparing chicken biryani which is also my favorite dish. So obviously when you will be start preparing the food you will be checking that what are the raw materials that are available in the house. So based on the ingredients that are needed for cooking a biryani you will first check what are the things that are already available within the fridge and you will take out all the stuff from your fridge and later what all the stuff that are not present in our house for that you will be going to your nearest supermarket to get those additional stuff. So over here with this example, we have actually covered the complete life cycle of the caching mechanism. So over here, you who is cooking is actually the user who is asking for the data via request and for that you are first checking the local refrigerator that is present within your house which is actually your cache memory. 
and after that if the element is not present within your cache memory then you are going to the supermarket and that supermarket is nothing but your actual data so i hope you guys have understand the entire analogy of the caching mechanism now, so now let's theoretically see that what is a caching or what is a distributed caching so in computing a cache is basically a high speed storage device which stores the subset of a data or a part of data which will help in enhancing the faster response time of the data so a caching actually helps you to efficiently reuse the previous computed data in the memory so that it could enhance the speed of the system and a distributed cache is nothing but a multiple number of caching system which you place strategically to enhance the response time of the application so now since we have understood that what is a caching let's now understand that why we need a distributed caching in our application so generally a backend application stores the data in a database and when a client application request for any data the application server first queries the data fetch the data from the database and then return it to the user but reading data from the database is a time consuming activity since it needs a network call as well as the io operation to fetch the data from the file system so you can imagine that if thousands of user are looking for the same data multiple number of time then the application server have to fetch the same data again and again repeatedly from the database and since accessing the data from the database is a time consuming activity so the overall performance of the system decreases drastically and that is why we need a caching mechanism which can hold a part of the data which are requested by the customer for multiple number of times and that is why we place a cache server in between the application server and the data so with the help of a cache in a distributed system what actually happens in the back side is like the user first request for the data to the application server and once the application server gets the request from the user it first check that whether the data is available on the cache or not if the data is available on the cache it will return the response within a fraction of second otherwise if the data is not present within the cache memory it will try to fetch from the distributed database and then it will return the response to the application server and thus in this way the entire cycle completes in a distributed system so i think till now you have understand that what is a cache and how it works internally within a distributed system now the concern is that while designing a huge scale application why we need a distributed caching mechanism to enhance the performance of the application so before discussing about the distributed architecture on caching i would like to request you that until this point if you like the video and if you have found this video useful do like and share this video and if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview and if you would like to connect with me on social media feel free to connect with me i will be providing all my social media handles in the description below so let's proceed our discussion of why we need a distributed caching mechanism in our system design architecture so there are many reasons why we need a distributed cache in our large scale application system and the reasons are as follows number 1 for accelerating the application so as we have already seen that by storing the most frequently accessed data in our distributed cache we can enhance the performance of the application by a large extent which makes our application faster and easy to use the second reason why we need to put a cache in our distributed system is for storing web session data so normally when you log into an application and perform some of the local setting change of the browser or application you will see that for the next time when you log into the same application the browser will restore some of the user preference setting that you have done in your earlier session so by using the browser caching memory the application normally store the settings or the user preference of a particular session which help the application for making a personalized website number third as we have already seen that a distributed caching mechanism helps in decreasing the network usage and the cost of accessing the database for multiple number of times and hence it reduces the network traffic number fourth it reduces the impact of the interruption which means that for example if you have a slower internet connection 
at that time the application instead of showing a blank page it will load some of the data from the local cache memory so that the user gets a flawless experience of the application and number 5 and the most important it helps in scaling up the application to a huge extent so these are the top 5 reason why you need a distributed cache in your application but now you can be thinking that if a distributed cache helps the application in enhancing in such a huge extent then why we can't store all the data in our distributed cache so that we can make our application extremely faster but the reason why we cannot keep all the data in a cache memory because a cache memory is highly expensive than a normal database and this is the only reason why we use an external database server for storing our huge dbs of data rather than storing it in our local cache now the question is if the memory of the cache is limited and we can only store a fewer amount of data in our cache storage then what should be the exact or the appropriate data that we should store in our cache memory and to answer the question we have few algorithms called as the cache eviction policies that we should follow for storing the data in our cache memory and the most popular six cache eviction policies are as follows and the first eviction policy is fifo means first in first out number 2 lifo that is last in first out and the most important among all the caching policies is lru that is least recently used which means that while evicting the data from the cache the cache will compute the data which was not recently used in our cache and those data it will delete from the cache and it will get replaced with the new reliable data in the cache and in many system design interview the interviewer will ask that write an algorithm to implement the lru caching policy where you need to explain the entire process of lru caching system as well as you have to write the algorithm associated with it for that i have already made a video for lru caching system if you want to know more about the lru caching system feel free to check that video i will be providing the video in the i icon over here Now the next few cache eviction policies are most recently used, least frequently used and random replacement. So if you want to know about all this eviction policies in detail, I will provide you the link in the description below. So until now, hopefully you have understand that what is a caching mechanism, why we need a caching in our distributed system and how a cache works internally within our distributed system. Now the main important thing that you need to know for designing a system is where you need to implement this caching mechanism in your architecture. So simply telling you can place your caching mechanism anywhere within your architecture wherever you want to store some relevant and meaningful data. which can be used in recent future and one of the most popular way of placing a cache server in our distributed application system is between the application server and the database server which is called the global caching but one small problem with this approach is that the application server have to communicate with the caching server using the network calls and you know that the network calls are pretty expensive but we can simply ignore this small network lag keeping in mind the huge advantage we are getting with this type of implementation because nowadays most of the popular application follows this type of architecture and one of the popular product that we use as a global cache is redis cache another popular way for implementing the caching mechanism in a distributed system is by using an in memory caching where each server is provided with a local cache next to the server and with this architecture the network cost get reduced significantly and thus the performance of the application increases by a huge margin but over here also there is one problem with the method of caching and that is the consistency of the data is lost with this type of implementation for example we have some local data in this cache and one of the process is computing some of the actions over here whereas there is another process within the application which is also manipulating the same data but on the different cache so there will be a data mismatch between the first server and the second server and that is the main problem with this type of in memory caching and to solve this problem of inconsistency of data we can use different varieties and type of cache in our distributed system so the types of cache that we can use in our distributed system are write through cache write back cache and write around cache the write through cache means the data is first written on the cache memory and then to the database a write back cache means that the data that is getting manipulated is directly written in the database and it is not stored in the local cache 
so that there is no mismatch between the two servers. Number three is the write around cache. In this scheme, the data is written only on the cache and the completion is immediately confirmed to the client. And this cache data is written on the permanent memory that is the DB after a specific interval of time. So these are the type of cache that are available for our distributed database system which you can implement to make your application faster and more responsive for the user. Hopefully you guys have understand that there can be one more problem while designing a distributed caching in a large scale application. And that is while storing the data in our cache, we have to also consider a mapping between the cache and the data. And that is why while dividing the data in a distributed cache, we need a hashing mechanism by which we can hash out the data with the corresponding hashing server. And that is when, while distributing the load in different cache, the concept of consistent hashing comes into picture. But since we have discussed a lot of things about the caching mechanism in this video, and since the video size has already become too big for a single tutorial, and that is why we will be discussing the concept of normal hashing as well as the concept of consistent hashing in our next video. So hopefully you guys have liked the video and this video was useful to you. If you have liked the video, don't forget to like and share this video. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So see you on the next video of system design where we will be discussing in detail that how you should distribute the data within our distributed caching system. And for that, we will be discussing the consistent hashing and normal hashing technique. So see you soon in the next video. Thank you.